welcome to our video. The Pelvic Health Physio Team here at St George's Hospital have created this video to be used during this period of time that it is not safe for you to receive outpatient physiotherapy. We hope that it will give you lots of ideas, coping strategies and some exercises to help you get through your pregnancy as pain free as possible. Please do download the links to patient leaflets that will be at the end of this video. You can print these off at home. Enjoy watching. Having pain whilst pregnant is very common. Some of the common places you may find that you get pain are one in three ladies will get lower back pain whilst pregnant and one in five will get pelvic girdle pain whilst they are pregnant, making these the most common symptoms. Other common symptoms seen in pregnancy are buttock pain, carpal tunnel syndrome, groin pain, hip pain, rib pain and many other pains. There are several factors that may cause pain during your pregnancy. These include hormonal changes, weight gain, postural changes and some changes to the muscles in your body. Let's go through these one by one. Let's start with hormones. Hormonal changes occur throughout your pregnancy. There's a hormone called relaxin that is released on day one and this will stay in your body till three days postnatally. You also have another hormone called progesterone. Um, and these hormones um, enable ligaments and muscles to soften, allowing your body to accommodate for your growing baby as well as preparing you for giving birth. The hormones will also affect all of your ligaments and your soft tissues throughout the body, giving your joints a little bit less support and therefore making these joints a little bit more likely to suffer aches and pains. Secondly, weight gain. It is normal and healthy to gain weight during pregnancy. Typically, women will put on between 9 and 15 kilos. Your growing baby, your uterus, amniotic fluid, your um, breast tissue, increased volumes of blood um, and fluid retention all play a role in this weight gain. A significant amount of weight gain is around the abdominal and pelvic area. The increased weight increases the load on weight-bearing joints and can contribute to pelvic and back pain as well. Thirdly, posture change. Posture changes occur during pregnancy due to a change in the centre of gravity. Um, so, what happens is there's um, changes at the SIJ and at the pubic symphysis joint. The normal curves that we have in the spine become exaggerated. So, your pelvis tilts forward. This increases uh, the curve at your lower back, your lumbar lordosis. And because this is more curved, this increases the curve at your thoracic. So here in your lower back becomes more curved and here in your thoracic becomes more curved. So it's more like that. <laughs> and these can be a key factor in developing pelvic and back pain. Finally, during pregnancy, certain muscles will stretch and become longer to accommodate the growing uterus and baby. For example, our abdominal wall, so this bit here, which gives us a normal corset of control, will become longer. These muscles support the spine. In addition, the group of muscles that sits at the base of your pelvis, known as the pelvic floor, this becomes longer, thinner and weaker because of the increased load upon it. As well as helping give us pelvic stability, the muscles are important for keeping continence and avoiding urinary and fecal incontinence. Although we cannot change the physiological effects of pregnancy, there is a lot we can do to ensure that we minimise the effects they will have on us. So you have just heard about the possible changes occurring to your body during pregnancy and how they might be contributing to your aches and pains. Which of these elements can you have an impact on and hopefully change the cause of your symptoms? So if we just recap, we can't stop our pregnancy hormones being produced and we can't, to some extent, stop our weight gain as the baby grows. However, we can try to be more aware of our posture and adapt our muscles to enable us to cope with these extra strains. 
Posture. Try to become more aware of your posture. If you can improve your alignment, it will reduce the amount of pressure on your joints and will also allow your muscles to work effectively and efficiently. Avoid prolonged postures, for example, standing, sitting, bending for more than 20 minutes. This might even be just standing up for a few seconds and sitting back down again, or doing a few pelvic tilts if you're standing in a queue, for example. When you sit, make sure you are well supported. If possible and helpful, use a few cushions behind your back when you're on the sofa to avoid you slumping. You could try to sit on a dining room chair with the back supporting your lower abdominal and chest. Using cushions at the front of your abdomen and sitting astride the chair, you can get into a very comfortable position which is well supported. Mix it up. Spend some time sitting on a chair at your desk and then swap it with a gym ball. Or try not to stand for the whole time doing a task like chopping vegetables. Can you sit at the worktop for some of the time? In fact, gym balls are also a great way to mobilise your pelvis and stretch your back while you're sitting at your desk. It is important that you stretch and mobilise your back, pelvis and upper back little and often to avoid stiffness and muscle tightness. Muscle strengthening. Postural changes and weight gain cause imbalance in muscles. Some muscles become tight and overactive and some become weak. In the following section, we will show you some great simple strengthening and stretching exercises which will help these principal muscles activate and respond again. There are a number of muscular changes during pregnancy which can contribute to pregnancy-related pain. The main muscles affected are pelvic floor muscles. The pelvic floor muscles are located at the bottom of your pelvis. They are a sling of muscles that run from the tailbone to the pubic bone. And they come around the exit of your bladder and your anus and support the walls of your vagina. During pregnancy, as the baby grows, the pressure on the pelvic floor increases. And when you give birth, a lot of pressure is put onto the pelvic floor. Both of these things weaken the pelvic floor muscle, and that's why it's even more essential to strengthen these muscles during pregnancy and after childbirth. There are two exercises that strengthen the pelvic floor. The first exercise is squeezing your back passage like you are trying to stop yourself passing wind. Squeezing your front passage like you are trying to stop yourself passing urine. And an internal lift. Hold this for up to 10 seconds and then fully relax. After five seconds, repeat this again. You want to repeat this in total 10 times. The second exercise is squeezing your back passage like you're trying to stop yourself passing wind, squeezing your front passage like you're trying to stop yourself passing urine and an internal lift and then immediately relax. Repeat this up to 20 times. No other muscles in your body should be contracting whilst you're doing this exercise. You want to repeat both of these exercises four times a day. Transverse abdominus. Transverse abdominus is a deep core muscle that runs from the bottom of the rib cage to the top of the pelvis. It is like a corset around the abdomen. It helps with core stability and supporting your bump during pregnancy. There are a few exercises you can do to strengthen the transverse abdominus. We'll go through a few of them now. Lie on your back with your knees bent and feet flat on the floor. You may require a wedge pillow to lie back on. Place your hands on either side of your bump and keep your gaze up to the ceiling as you inhale. As you exhale, tighten your abdominal and pelvic floor muscles, pulling your belly button in towards your spine. Hold this position as you continue to breathe. Control the movement as you relax your abdominal muscles as you exhale again. 
tighten your core stability and pelvic floor muscles. Slowly straighten one leg out on the floor, remembering to breathe gently throughout. Slowly bring your leg back in, keeping your back and waist as still as possible. Start on your hands and knees, with your hands under your shoulders and knees under your hips. Focus your gaze between your hands and inhale. As you exhale, tighten your abdominal and pelvic floor muscles, pulling your belly button in towards your spine. Hold this position as you continue to breathe. Control the movement as you relax your abdominal muscles as you exhale again. Rectus abdominis. These are a top layer of muscles covering your abdomen. These muscles are more commonly known as your abs. They run from your rib cage to your pubic bone. They are in two halves and are joined by a strip of tissue called the linea alba. As your baby grows, more pressure is put onto your rectus abdominis and this can cause the linea alba to stretch. This is completely normal and natural. You want to try and avoid making this stretch more than necessary. So try to avoid the movement of coming from lying on your back to sitting up straight, as this puts unnecessary pressure on the rectus abdominis and the linea alba. We will discuss how to do this differently later on in the video. Quadratus lumborum. This is a back muscle that runs from the top of the hips to the spine and last rib. This muscle can become tight during pregnancy due to the forward tilt position of the pelvis that can develop meaning that the muscle is kept in a shortened position, therefore becoming tight. The way to stretch this muscle is... Sit upright on a firm chair. Place one hand securely on the side of the chair and lift the other arm into the air. Lean your elevated arm over your head, allowing your ribs to gently flare out to one side and hold. Release and lower your arm back down and repeat on the other side. The gluteal muscles. The gluteal muscles are one of the biggest muscle groups in the body. There are three muscles that make up this group, gluteus minimus, gluteus medius and gluteus maximus. Gluteus minimus and medius are responsible for moving the leg out to the side and gluteus maximus is responsible for moving the leg and the hip back. The glutes help stabilize the pelvis and move the legs when we're doing activities such as walking and climbing the stairs. They can often become weak due to the forward tilt position of the pelvis that can develop during pregnancy. This causes them to be held in a lengthened position and therefore causes them to weaken. There are lots of exercises that can be completed to help strengthen the gluteus muscles. We will go through a few of them now. Lie on your side with a pillow between your knees and your bottom arm outstretched. Bend your knees with your feet in line with your buttocks. Tighten your pelvic floor and lower stomach muscles. Keeping your feet together, lift your top knee slowly up into the air, ensuring you do not rotate your body backwards. Control the movement as you lower your leg back down to the starting position. There should be no pain in the front of your pelvis as you perform this exercise. Start on your hands and knees, with your hands under your shoulders and knees under your hips. Make sure your back is flat. Gently tighten your pelvic floor and stomach muscles. Keeping your toes in contact with the floor, slowly slide your leg out behind you. Slide your leg back into the starting position and then repeat with the other. With the gym ball in the middle of your lower back, lean onto the ball, letting it take your body weight. Keeping your back straight, slowly bend both of your knees, sinking your hips straight down towards the floor. Aim to achieve a 90 degree bend at your knees, or as far as you can manage comfortably. Control the movement as you straighten back up to the starting position. The glutes can also become overworked and tight during pregnancy due to the increasing weight of your baby. You can stretch them by... Start on your hands and knees. Slide your left knee forward on the floor, allowing enough space to cross your right leg over the back of your left calf. From this position, carefully sit back, allowing a gentle and controlled stretch in the right buttock while you exhale. 
If you feel that this position is putting too much pressure on your stomach, you can bring your hands closer and sit slightly more upright. Coming back up, inhale and push your right shin into the floor. Uncross your legs behind you and come back into a neutral all fours position. Piriformis. The piriformis is a small muscle in your bottom underneath the glutes muscles. It runs from the bottom of your spine to the top of your hip. This muscle tends to get very tight if the glutes become weak. The problem with this muscle being tight is that the sciatic nerve runs just behind the piriformis and can become irritated if the piriformis is tight. The way to stretch out the piriformis is Cross the symptomatic leg your ankle is resting on to the opposite knee. Apply gentle pressure to the knee as you lean forward, increasing the depth of the stretch. Hold this position. You should feel a comfortable tension with no pain. If you are finding this stretch is aggravating your pain, then you need to stop. Adductors. The adductors are a group of muscles that run along the inside of your leg that attach onto your pubic bone at the front of your pelvis. These muscles can become tight during pregnancy and can increase the pain felt around the groin and the pubic bone. The way to stretch out these adductors are... Take a large step out to the side and keep both feet on the floor with the toes slightly turned out. Shift your weight to one side, bending this knee. You will feel a stretch down the inside of the thigh on the straight leg. Hold this position. If you are finding this stretch is aggravating your pain, then you need to stop. Getting in and out of bed or comfortable at night time is unfortunately one of the most commonly reported um, issues that women might experience. Not all of these things are going to work for everyone, but hopefully some of the little tips and tricks might help alleviate um, your symptoms at least a little bit. Most women will actually prefer lying on something softer. So if you've got a spare duvet um, or a mattress topper or anything that helps cushion the area, we would say try putting that underneath your fitted sheet so that the whole side and the whole area that you're lying on is immediately a little bit softer. Um, so getting in and out of bed, um, thinking as well about all of the different muscles that um, are likely to be taking an easier way out, it's worth trying to give them a little bit of encouragement. So we're thinking about our pelvic floor muscles, our lower tummy muscles, so the ones that might feel like um, you're keeping baby close, um, as well as trying not to hold your breath. Um, so getting in and out, getting into bed, if you have got a bed that hasn't got a footboard, some women actually find crawling into bed a little bit easier. If one side of your body is a little bit more uncomfortable, I would say start by bringing the more painful side onto the bed first and then crawl forwards and then lowering yourself onto one side. If you've got a maternity cushion, use that. Um, otherwise, make your own with lots of cushions or take, oops, so sorry, fold up some pillow uh, towels Put some tape around that until it's at a thickness that's comfortable for you um, and pop that in between, okay? Now, at, within your um, second trimester, around 27 weeks, we would encourage all women to try and fall asleep on your sides. Now, you will still need to move at night time and that's often what can be quite effortful. So when you're woken at night, be that to uh, move position, the fact that you need to go to the toilet or you're uncomfortable, try giving your body a little bit of time to uh, get used to the movement, perhaps doing some very gentle pelvic tilts um, and making sure that you're not bracing, so you're not holding your breath because you're thinking that the movement is going to be painful. Um, if um, Turning in bed is really uncomfortable. Rather than rolling, what you might find helpful is if you've conveniently woken up on the edge of the bed anyway, is keep your cushions there if it's a light cushion. Place one hand in front of you, use your elbow to push down, and then with a the breath out, push yourself up. I know I'm making this look a lot easier than it is. Um, 
remove the cushion, hopefully you've got slightly longer bed than we do, pop the cushion back down and then lower yourself. So that avoids any unnecessary twisting or turning. Um, other ways of turning in bed would be either keeping the cushion there or not, tilt, um, tucking your tailbone under for a pelvic tilt, breathing out, having a little, bit, a little pause, and then moving over again. Or you can, if this is more comfortable, or it looks more appealing, push yourself up. Come into a four point kneeling position. You may want to do a gentle stretch there if it feels comfortable and available to you. Crawl your side your way over and lower down. Due to the aforementioned uh, changes and the fact that your body, uh, body's demands are different now that you're pregnant, certain activities that normally are quite easy to do might, might seem a little bit more difficult. Um, again, these are just suge suggestions and we appreciate they don't work for everyone, but it's just what in our clinical experience, women uh, most commonly report to find a little bit more challenging. Starting with standing, um, your body is likely to just try and feed into your natural posture um, or the fact that you've got a lovely bump growing and pulling you forwards. Um, it's very tempting to then hitch or lean on one, one side. Uh, a way to overcome that would be trying to practice your pelvic tilting exercises um, or just doing some pelvic floor exercises or even standing in a slight step stance because then it's far less tempting for your body to want to go side to side. If anything, you'll be swaying more forwards and backwards. Um, sitting down for a long period of time, as relieving as that sounds or restful, is often quite challenging and uncomfortable. Um, most pregnant women will actually prefer um, to sit with their hips slightly higher than your knees. So if you've got a pregnancy gym ball at home um, or a maternity ball um, that is high enough, then that's great. Just make sure that it's got an anti-burst proof resistant or burst proof guarantee label on it somewhere. Um, sitting on the sofa um, sounds very inviting, but it does hug us into quite, a, um, quite an exaggerated posture. Um, so if you've got an ordinary dining room chair or anything that's quite nice and sturdy, a way to make it a little bit more comfortable is just taking an ordinary cushion, folding that in half, um, and then a good old towel that you rolled up into a position that's comfortable for you. You sit onto the cushion, does deflate, <laughs> um, and then place um, the, the cushion or the towel in, your small, in the small of your back, and it feels relatively um, supportive and comfy. It just means that it will, if you're a little bit vertically challenged, um, it will bring your hips a little bit higher and it's generally more comfortable for your hips to be higher than your knees when you're sitting. Whereas if you were on a sofa or a very low chair, um, or slouching back, this is more the position that your body is likely to adopt. Um, and then when it comes to getting in and out of the chair or moving, where possible, try thinking about giving your body a little bit of a nudge, gentle pelvic tilt, breathing out, or at least not holding your breath, um, and off you go. As earlier mentioned, um, some activities that are normally very easy to do are a little bit more challenging. Um, standing, we would encourage you to try and avoid hip pitching onto one side, or repeatedly allowing the baby to just pull you forwards. Um, instead, you can adopt a small step stance, so I've got one foot slightly in front of the other, which just instantly makes it less inviting for me to want to shift onto one side. Instead, I might want to sway forwards and backwards, or with feet together, you can just do some gentle pelvic tilting. So a nice way of thinking about what pelvic tilting should feel like, it's a very subtle and soft movement, um, and you're almost imagining that you're trying to keep baby close rather than allowing baby to lead the way. Um, so what you might feel when you're doing this movement is a little bit of your lower tummy muscles kicking in for action, maybe a little bit of your bottom cheeks, um, but it shouldn't be a very forced movement. Um, right, getting on and off the floor is something that you are likely to have to do, but a lot of you will be dreading. 
Um, if you've got something that you can hold on to, lower it down. Um, or, um, but there will be situations where you're just not going to be able to. So if you, for example, have got toddlers and they are adamant that you want to get, they want to play with you on the floor, um, there's only so much reason, reasoning I'm sure that you can do. So things that can be helpful is trying to keep the same amount of weight through both legs. So slowly lowering down onto your knees and staying in a high kneeling position and getting um, the little ones to bring things to you to play can be quite nice. I'll just turn to the side so you can see. Again, we would say try not to allow um, bump to pull you forwards. Keep a little bit of sort of a subtle activation, should we say. And sitting down, you may want to pop a cushion um, in between your uh, heels and butt bottom. And um, rather than shifting onto one side, um, this is often a position, or getting out of this position is often what's really uncomfortable. So if you can get into kneeling, you may want to pop something under your feet, um, a little cushion underneath your buttocks, or from time to time, just lift up. Now when it comes to moving up, again, bump and body is going to try and make things as easy for you. If that's uncomfortable or painful, we would encourage you to try something different. So what's likely to happen is that bump and, and just your general posture is going to want you to just pull forwards. I don't have to work very hard in this position. Um, instead, we would encourage you to try and think about your pelvic tilting again, so keeping bump close and lifting up. Now, all that small movement has done is really, really made me feel like my my quad, my, uh, the, the muscles in the front of my legs are having to work a little bit harder. So in a way, that can be an exercise that you're incorporating as you're getting on and off the floor for whatever it is that you're having to do. Um, a nice resting position on the floor could be anything in four point kneeling. So even just resting this position, you can take a cat cow, you can move your tailbone side to side, you can walk your hands over to one side so you get a nice stretch. I will just show you these stretches from a different angle. So this is my uh, cat. So you should feel a stretch along the back and top. You may want to just move your tailbone side to side. You can do some circles. Or you can do something that can call a half moon position, I guess. If you do have a gym ball or maternity ball, um, they can be used quite nicely for resting positions, so allowing your whole body, take, body weight to be taken and leaning forwards. Um, so you might want to watch the telly from here. <laughs> Um, and sitting on the gym balls can also be quite nice um, to do. We would encourage you to have your have one that has your hips higher than your knees. So this is a little bit tall for me, but I'm sure you get the yes. gym. Getting back off the floor um, is often quite a uh, challenging uh, movement as well. So you've got a couple of different options. Some may find it better to just crawl forwards until they're uh, near a sofa or anything sturdy that they can help themselves push up and use their hands to get up from. Um, I would say um, if, if that isn't an option for you, um, come from a kneeling position, tuck your tailbone under a little bit, think about not holding your breath. If one side of your body is a little bit more uncomfortable, so if you've got pain more on one side, you may find it easier to bring your less painful side forwards first and then stand up um, or if you're someone who in the past um, has done a lot of yoga or pilates um, you may find that moving from a full point kneeling position using your arms quite a bit tucking your feet under and pushing up and then moving your hands back is an option for you um, see which one resonates most with you and hopefully some of the uh, tips have been helpful for you.
The method of relaxation we will go through in this section of our video is called the Mitchell Method of, of Relaxation. Once learned and practiced, it can be used easily anywhere or anytime to help you to relax and reduce the muscle tension produced by stress. Life is full of events and times that may cause us to feel stressed and pregnancy can be one of those times, particularly if you are experiencing pain. To start the session, get yourself into a comfortable position where your body is well supported. The room doesn't have to be dark and it does not need to be completely quiet. If possible, the room should be comfortably warm. There are three key instructions that we use for each body part. The first is that we move the body part away from the position of stress. The second is we then stop that movement. And the third is that we feel and be aware of this new relaxed position. We'll start off with the shoulders. Pull your shoulders towards your feet, away from the ears, making the neck feel longer. Stop. Feel that your shoulders are lower down and that there's now a wider space between them and your ears. Straighten your elbows, opening out the elbow joints. Stop. Feel the positions of your arms and elbows. With your hands, stretch out your fingers and your thumbs. Stop. Feel your fingers and thumbs fall back into their resting position. Turn your hips outwards. Feel your thighs and your legs roll outwards as if you're rolling your knees away from each other. Stop the movement and feel that your legs have rolled outwards. With your feet, Push your feet away from your head, bending the ankles downwards and gently pointing your toes. Stop the movement and feel the new relaxed position of your legs. Press your body onto the bed, chair or the floor. Stop and feel this new relaxed position. Press your head into the pillow or the chair. Stop. Feel this new position. Take a deep breath in through your nose. And as you breathe out through your mouth, feel your tummy swell out. You can repeat this twice. The ribs move in and out and breathe at a natural rate. Move your jaw down. Don't open your mouth, just unclench your teeth inside your mouth and gently move your jaw down. Stop. Feel the space between your upper and your lower teeth and your lips are still gently touching each other. Bring your tongue down from the roof of your mouth and let it lie in the middle of your mouth. 